code squid 20% off link in the description there's sparch on the channel i don't really talk about them that much but good clean healthy energy or wherever again link in the description use code squid for 20 percent off but they're not sponsoring this video this is actually going to be a correction video i actually recorded recently a video talking about audio mixers and what was out there i would say on the market and what was available for content creators and streamers and talking about the absurdity that a lot of companies are dropping products with companion apps to be able to have sub mixes inside the software but not having the physical controls to control those individual submixes and what i mean by individual submixes is what you're hearing is a is a mix or uh, a mixture of actual sound inputs and what that means is while you're streaming you're hearing a actual mix or an audio mix and when you're streaming you're hearing like stuff like discord being uh broadcast into your headphones as, and on top of that your game sound if you're playing some type of game or something like that um whatever music app or the internet that you're hearing your music from and the internet and possibly just a myriad of other things wherever including like maybe monitoring your microphone volume obviously some of those things might be a little bit loud for you or some things that you would like to have the volume up versus other things you would like to have the volume down that might sound good to you but as a viewer who is watching your stream they might prefer a different type of uh i would say audio experience sometimes people would like to not let their stream hear who's in discord or what they're saying in discord but they obviously want to hear what people are saying in their discord and want to be able to talk to them respond and stuff like that just maybe you know that person's a little bit private or wherever and don't want to share themselves on your stream you can mute that or wherever but again still hear it for yourself that's individual submixes it's usually in a program there's usually two bars or wherever uh one displaying the audio for you know I would say headphones or wherever as an icon. The other one having companies have different, uh, I would say icons for, you know, what's considered the stream mix or wherever, but they'll have some kind of broadcast signal or something like that as far as an icon inside the sub mixes or inside the mixing software. The problem with this is that again, that explanation is needed because a lot of companies are coming out with products that are for streamers that are supposed to be geared towards people who want to be able to control those audio levels between again what you're hearing versus your streams what your stream is hearing i'll play a clip right now from somebody who was supposed to have talked to mackie uh, about their mackie mainstream and said that he told them what streamers needed or wherever in the in the, i guess the software and gave them a laundry list of things to change up and everything like that but never once did he mention in the video that the product that he had got and tested was actually not for streamers because streamers again want control over those sub mixes in a physical device not just in software because the problem is a lot of people don't want to sit there and alt tab out of the video game they're playing or go and find the software on a separate screen to adjust those things people want to be able to turn down the volume or push it up with a actual fader or something like that or a knob just having the software is not enough so this right here shows the incompetence of some content creators who think they are streamers and know what streamers want and they go and talk to these companies and give them the wrong information. Here's that clip. Last thing about this you should definitely know, they're also releasing software for this called the Mackie Matrix, which gives you that mixing capability that I mentioned before with the Stream Deck Plus, where it gives you a bunch of virtual inputs and outputs so you can separate your game volume from your teammate volume from your music volume and you can also output a different output to your stream and to your monitors and to discord and even a fourth one in case you want to do a vod track to twitch this should be coming out within the next week or two tops is what they told me it's definitely not as polished of software as like the beacon software or the elgato wavelength software so you should be aware there and that's why i mentioned plugging in a stream deck plus because that will be a better experience. You'll get a better software mixer and you'll get hardware dials to control it rather than using your keyboard and mouse. But it's worth knowing that if you don't have some of that hardware and you want those capabilities, that will be coming out in the next couple weeks. In fact, I've already tested it and used it. I've sent them a laundry list of things I want them to change, but for the most part, it does what it's supposed to do. No, fundamentally, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. It fails at the basic 
operation it's supposed to even achieve. What are you talking about? Now, that is to say that, you know, this person isn't um, incompetent or whatever in the sense of, you know, flat out incompetence or flat out stupid. It's just the, again, the wrong information that companies need to hear. And like I said, a lot of companies, including Rode, including uh, Elgato, including, I would say, uh, even the Avermedia thing that I, I would say recommended last time, even Beacon and even um, Mackey, these, ro these companies are in the, I would say, on the road or on the right path um, down that road. But the problem is, is again, they're all missing the mark. The only person that has come close or wherever is Avermedia and Elgato. The Avermedia and game, Live Gamer Nexus allows you from the screen itself or wherever, the little touch screen that has five pages, it allows you to control a lot of uh, OBS functionality and everything like that, similar to a Stream Deck, but it has, I would say, knobs at the bottom that are dedicated to you know changing the volume and stuff like that, which is good. On one of those five screens, you can put up a page that allows you to click on, uh, I would say, the individual submixes or wherever based on what you want to hear you can click and adjust that and then click the screen again and adjust what your stream is hearing straight from the device it cost 350 when it first launched back in 2021 and it's showing this age or wherever as far as not having a capture card and updated like inputs and stuff like that but they're still working on the software as of 2023 they were still putting out updates and stuff like that and from what i can gleam they're still i would say doing um, updates or whatever and working on the software and is probably going to be a 2.0 in the future because it looks like you know they're dropping capture cards at the beginning of this year which they already dropped at the time of recording so i imagine in some if they make a future iteration like a 2.0 of this they will have in that capability of having that capture card uh probably built into the device which would be really really good in my personal opinion the problem is is like yeah even though the software is updated or wherever and they keep on working on it it's always seems as far as avermedia goes to be kind of lagging behind elgato um and again just because the Elgato software is the best in, I would say, the system or the pool of things that we're looking at doesn't mean it's the best software out there. A polished turd is still a turd, in my personal opinion. And again, somebody who's been using the Wavelink software, uh, I would say, since roughly about since it first dropped, going all the way back to the Wave 1 microphone, upgrading to the Wave XLR and using it or wherever since like 2021 and 2022, respectively, when the devices dropped, um, it's just, it's it's not a good experience, just my personal opinion. And then now we have a $200 device that allows you to control the submixes, but I'll get into that little rant in a little bit. But again, the Avermedia allows you to control the submixes, but again, you still have to do the step of clicking to change the individual instead of having two rows of dials, one for your monitoring mix, one for the stream mix, and then maybe having a button or wherever that's right next to the you know two rows of knobs that cycles between what you're hearing versus what your stream is hearing playing back to you in your ears and you can adjust that way. So if I click a button and then, you know, it switch means over to my stream mix and then I have a separate dedicated row of knobs to be able to adjust that. Click the button again and it goes back to my monitoring mix. Again, have a dedicated row of knobs or faders, dedicated physical devices already mapped to those mixes. That's what a streamer needs. Not this, oh, it's in the software located and running on your computer that you have to have open anyways, but you have no physical device. You know, get distracted or stop doing whatever you were doing just to control a mix or wherever, and then go back to whatever you're doing and go about your day. That's not how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be easy. These devices are supposed to be making stuff simplified, and they're not, they're not doing that. And that is the problem. And they're costing 200 to 300 and sometimes even more for a device. And they're trying to tell us that these devices are justified in price. And this is for streamers, maybe for people who are, you know, streaming podcasts in the, I would say the era of the DLZ creator series, the XS and the bigger boy. And then like the, even the road casters and stuff like that, those devices, yes, you can use them for gaming, sh live streaming and stuff, but those are more for podcasting, maybe doing some kind of church thing, interview business, all that stuff. Those are great. Those are wonderful for those types of content or wherever. But again, for streamers who are gaming 
and who are having multiple audio preferences and audio sources routed into a device, whether it's a device that's running application software on the device itself, or it's a program on your computer that you have to leave open. Either way, there are people out there who want to hear music and mute it for stream or, you know, change the music volume for them. Maybe they want to really hype out or wherever and blast it in their ears, blowing out their eardrums, but then want it peace and tranquil or wherever on their stream. They want those different audio levels. That's just how some people enjoy controlling their stuff or wherever. And if I'm paying 200 to 300 to 400 dollars, maybe 500, 700 dollars for your devices, and you're not letting me control that, but you're bundling in a companion app that takes me even more steps to even do anything, and it's already stressful enough when you're live streaming to control everything. These devices, again, are supposed to put my mind at ease. It's supposed to make my workflow easier and stuff like that and let me get things done and accomplish tasks or wherever I have to accomplish because I, you know, time is precious. And not being able to do that and making stuff even more cumbersome and then, like I said, charging those absorbent amounts of money or wherever. And then you have these content creators backing these guys and telling you like, this is a really good device and this is for streamers or wherever, and I'm telling them what that you guys need and stuff like that. And it's like, are you even paying attention? Like, are you even in the realm or the scope of, do you even know what you're talking about? And you're saying that you're an audio engineer or wherever, but you're not telling anybody what we actually really need. And it's like, uh, you, like, it's just, it's confusing to me, but everybody, you know, love, th love these content creators. Everybody loves these, com these companies and stuff. And like I said, what they're doing or wherever, it's not bad but it's not actual an all-in-one solution for a content creator. And like I said, people are gonna be blindsided by these problems and issues if they go out and purchase these these devices because a content creator that they look up to or they expect, respected, their, I would say their advice or something like that, told them to go and purchase this device because it's really good and wherever, and they show them how to use it and stuff. And then once they get the product in, in hand, because they saved up that 300, 400, $500 for this device or this ecosystem, and then they realize, hey, this is not what a streamer needs. And I understand like right tool for the right job, different, you know, preferences and people are doing different things. But like I said, if you're game streaming, if you have multiple audio sources that you're going to be listening to in your headphones and you're going to be streaming that like on Twitch, Kick, you know, YouTube or something like that. And it's not like a podcast setting or something like that or a structural like show like a church or something like that. Or, you know, if you're not doing that type of stuff, then what I'm talking about that you're able to do with the even the Avermedia Nexus or wherever is going to be what you're going to want. The only other devices out there on the market is going to be from Elgato and Beacon. Beacon, that microphone's almost $300. That Beacon Mix Create that you need or wherever to be able to do what I was talking about as far as those mixes or wherever is $200. You see what I'm saying? You have to be in that ecosystem. You can't do anything else. Anytime you try to use that Beacon Mix Create to do anything else, it's janky. It doesn't work all the time. You don't want something like that that decides to work one minute and then decides not to work the next minute and even if you are, are in the ecosystem with the microphone and the crate i've seen horror stories of people just constantly complaining wherever in comment sections even to this day and that product was at least like two years ago they can't get their crap together as far as getting that software and again your results may vary you know what i'm saying there's going to be people out there that said i never had an issue i've seen it you know but just because you never had an issue doesn't mean somebody else hasn't and just because you don't have an issue doesn't mean that you can flame somebody else saying they're making it up or wherever or it's their fault or something like that. And it's like, no, it's the software. It could be a lot of points of failure because you're running software on your PC and you have to constantly keep it open. And in order to th work the thing correctly, you're going to need their microphone or wherever to really hone in on, I guess, the full access to just everything. And again, you're paying how much? almost $300 with for that microphone again which is just extremely overpriced that microphone should not be even over 200 regardless if it's doing the the processing of all the stuff wherever on it mic itself so it's lowering resources on your pc you're still having to use a usb uh, plug or wherever or port on your pc and on top of that you're still having to have the beacon mix software open on your pc so some resources it might not be as much but there's still resources being allocated on your pc not to mention the beacon mix create is going to take 
freaking another USB port. And some of these devices, especially with Elgato, have to have specific USB ports or types of ports on your PC. And some people with budget builds and stuff like that with their motherboard, they might not have too many of those ports even available at all. Not to mention if they have other products or whatever that need that type of USB port. So it's just, it's ridiculous to me how people can just be that complacent or that uh, desensitized and groomed and, and just, I would say, pushed in a way to where they're just like, hey, yeah, I can deal with this. I can just let this slide. And it's just weird to me. And not to mention the whole Elgato's. I'm gonna put on the screen how much it would cost. You have to get literally one of these devices wherever on this list. And the most optimal device where devices on this list is gonna be the most costly. The best device on this list for its microphone input is not gonna be the Wave 1 or the Wave 3. It's actually going to be the Wave XLR just because you can use whatever microphone you want. You could change up the microphones and stuff like that, try different microphones um, that you might like or wherever and have a path to upgrade in the future. That device itself has to be plugged into a specific type of USB port on your PC. That's one. And on top of that, you're gonna have the Wavelink software open, okay? The most optimal stream deck is going to be the 32 button one if you're going to be a streamer and doing some other productivity work or wherever outside of streaming. If you're just be doing productivity work, you can get a buy with the 15 button one. But again, bare bones, just out of experience of having both the 15 button stream deck and the 32 button stream deck, the 32 button one is just the best one to get or wherever, again, for doing multi-variety, multi-faceted content creation. But that's like 200 bucks. You can might find it a little bit cheaper for refurbished or used or something like that, but it's around 200 bucks. So again, you see already we're like 350 almost 400 dollars and then on top of that yes you can do some functionality or wherever there's going to be people in the comment section saying you can do it on the stream deck they have different updates and doing digital faders with buttons and all that stuff i've seen all the updates i've seen all that stuff but from a practicality like real world use you're gonna need the stream deck plus or wherever to you know click a knob and it makes you from what you hear to your stream, what your stream hears, and you can adjust the volume that way on a dedicated knob. There's only four. Yes, you can swipe the screen or wherever and get access to four more because I have eight audio sources within Wavelink and you can have up to nine max. So I'm using pretty much I would say 90% of the capability of the Wavelink software using VSTs on all the plugins and stuff like that. And I'm telling you right now, even doing all that and actually telling you that you need the Wave XLR or at least the Wave 1 or Wave 3 because there's a separate menu that you get for a dedicated microphone plugged into that stuff. So just getting the Stream Deck Plus and using Wavelink is not going to be, I would say, optimal because you're losing out on this menu that you need. Even if you have another audio mixer that's an XLR audio mixer that allows you to control like the DB gain and all that stuff and the, and the click guard and everything like that, if that allows you to do it, you're still, it's not going to sound right if you don't have one of the Wave devices. And I feel like that's intentional. And I'm telling you from testing it and having, again, since the Wave XLR, since it dropped, the Wave 1 microphone, I would say a month or two after it dropped, been here since day one, pretty much almost with the Wavelink software. I am telling you from doing a lot of microphone tests and hooking up microphones and testing and doing a whole bunch of audio, um, recording internally into my cameras and using OBS to record, having this stuff run through the Wavelink. I am telling you, you're gonna want to have the wave xlr or one of the wave microphones in order to get the full optimal capability of the software and even then it's still janky freezing having to be on a dedicated screen it can't be on other monitors open up vsts you can't do it on other monitors and other than your primary monitor because if you do it freezes and crashes your pc that's a known bug it also happens with the way uh with the stream deck i've seen people say they don't have that issue and i've seen people say they do have that issue i've seen people say a random update fix that issue after a recent random update, it's it transferred not only from my Stream Deck to my Wavelink, so I'm having that issue now. So again, it's just 200 bucks for the Stream Deck Plus in order to have actual physical control over the Wavelink software, but at the same time, it's still not an optimal way of doing it. What they should have done is gotten rid of the Stream Deck buttons because again, they're Elgato. Everybody in the mom damn near has a, a Stream Deck sitting on their desk by now. 
it's ridiculous to think that they don't. Even people who don't even stream or do video game, I've seen videos on people how they use the Stream Deck for uh, you know, color grading and all this other crazy stuff. So there was no reason to put Stream Deck buttons on the Stream Deck Plus. They could have called it the Wavelink, like, I, I don't know, something the Wavelink Plus or something like that, and had the not the dot the I would say the knobs at the top or something like that or at the bottom and stuck faders on it. They could have done that and had the capability of mapping one of those faders to what you hear and then mapping another fader to what your stream is hearing and being able to do that. That would have gave us full control over the Wavelink software. And on top of that, they could have, you know, dropped a Wavelink 2. Point, uh, Wave XLR 2.0 or something like that, right? and make it as big as the 32 button stream deck, right? And then on one side, you have, like I said, those faders and those knobs at the bottom. And on the other side, you have the actual, I would say control module, like the Wave XLR looks right now. That's That would have been something that makes sense. That would have cost $200. You know what I'm saying? I like, it's $50 more over the Wave XLR. It allows you to have physical controls if that's what you want. That would have made sense. Elgato, no Elgato, they probably would have charged $250 to $300 for a device like that. And it's just like, why are we letting companies get away with this, man? It's just so astronomically mind blowing that we have these companies out here who are saying that they have, you know, devices for streamers. And then you look at the device and there's not knobs, there's not faders. And if there are knobs and faders, it only controls your microphone volume and your headphone volume, and that's it. If you wanted to control any other volumes of anything or wherever, you have to use your software, but there's no physical control for the software. And like I said, the only thing you have is the subpar, I would say Avermedia software or wherever, and uh, something that's trying to do a jack of all trades master of none kind of thing with the avermedia product but again at least on the device itself you can control those individual so, uh sub mixes then you have razor they came out with their own you know i would say a go xlr clone but that thing can even control the razor synapse like sub mix thing or wherever it's like two separate things the microphones have that software but their mixer doesn't have access to that software or those features of that software so it's like what's the point and then you have Beacon over here charging extreme amounts for their products or wherever, just because I, I don't know why, but they're, they're just, you know, I, I don't even know how they legally can get away with overpricing something like that. With the Rode, the Streamer X charging, I think it's like $300, $400 or whatever for that thing. And you don't even have control over anything that comes with the companion app software. It's like, wh what are you doing? You made the casters. Like, are you, are you dumb? It's just like, like I said, it's like they never, any of these companies, even mainstream from Mackie, it's like none of these companies ever talk to an actual, I would say streamer or actually somebody who has experience using submixes and stuff and what they wanted as far as in devices for streaming and stuff like that. But then they come out with a device that allows you to do nothing a streamer needs or actually wants and then charge $400 for it. It's absolutely insane. And then, like I said, you have people like this guy telling you to, to go ahead and, you know, pay $300 for a device because it's an all-in-one for streamers, capture cards, all this cool stuff or wherever. And then he even says himself, you got to plug a Stream Deck Plus into the device to be able to control submixes. Because even though they're dropping their own software, you can't do that. So you might as well use a, another company's device that costs 200. So he's telling you literally to pay like $500 to get an audio setup. When you have better devices out there that cost in that realm, and even they don't have sub mixes that you can. I'm done, man. I don't know what the point of this video is. I...